I'd like to share with you some really unusual symptoms that are associated with a vitamin C deficiency, things that you probably have never heard before. You may know if you're deficient in vitamin C, you're going to get bleeding gums, or you might get tired, or you might have a loss of collagen that can show up in a lot of different ways with your skin, joints, tendons, ligaments, things like that. You also probably know that people take vitamin C when they get sick because a deficiency can create a lowered immune system. I recently did a video talking about vitamin C deficiencies in increasing your risk to getting biofilms, which can actually be the placking or tartar in your teeth. But I think what's even more important is to understand what vitamins really are. What actually does a vitamin do? Many people don't really know. They know it's associated with their health, but what is that vitamin doing in your body? Vitamins are cofactors. Now, what is a cofactor? It's something that works with 15 different enzymes. Without vitamins and certain minerals, these enzymes can't work. Now, what happens when you're deficient in vitamin C is your body is going to start allocating the vitamin C that you have to just the essential enzymes to keep you alive, okay? Not all of them. So this is the reason why some people have certain symptoms of a vitamin deficiency, but not others. They may have a subclinical deficiency, but they don't have a major deficiency. But you do have to realize that if you completely run out of vitamin C, you will die. It's very fatal. You know, scurvy, which is a severe vitamin C deficiency, became a really big problem when they started to use pasteurization, like for milk, and giving it to babies. Babies would end up with scurvy. So heat does degrade vitamin C. Now that you have that information, let's go through some symptoms that you probably never connected with a vitamin C deficiency. Number one, hypochondria. That's right. Hypochondria is a symptom of a vitamin C deficiency, which is pretty wild. And I'm going to put the references down below. So if someone's a deficient in vitamin C, they can literally be kind of paranoid thinking that they have every single disease around when they really don't. That's interesting. Depression is another symptom of a vitamin C deficiency. This next one is called perifollicular hyperkeratosis. Now, what is that? Peri means around the follicle, like the hair follicle. And hyperkeratosis is kind of like a roughened red little scaly um, skin lesion that is around the hair follicles. And sometimes the hair follicle coils, okay? That is a vitamin C deficiency. So if you have it, you should start taking vitamin C. Number four, anemia. We think iron, B12, but we don't really think vitamin C. A vitamin C deficiency can cause anemia. Dry hair, inflamed veins, as in spider veins, shortness of breath. Also, vitamin C is needed for the adrenals. So you can have a problem with your adrenaline if you don't have enough vitamin C. Now, where do we get vitamin C? It's in fruits in vegetables, right? Now, there is some vitamin C in beef liver, but it's only like 27 milligrams per 100 grams of liver. Okay, that's not too much. The RDAs are the requirements that our body needs is roughly about 70 milligrams, and this is 27. Steak has some vitamin C, but it's 25 micrograms, right? Not milligrams, just a tiny bit. But mainly if you eat berries, peppers, sauerkraut has the most, is like 10 times more than anything else, or leafy greens, you're going to get your vitamin C. However, if you get 100% apple juice, right, it says right here, it's high in vitamin C. It says in the back of the label, if you drink one cup, you'll get 100% of the RDAs for vitamin C. Well, could this be true? Well, let's take a look. All right, so we have a large apple in one cup of apple juice, which comes out to 237 milliliters, okay? If we take a look at the sugar and we compare it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six teaspoons of sugar in one apple, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teaspoons of sugar in one cup of apple juice. The thing to know about is this thing right here, this is one teaspoon of sugar. This is how much sugar that we're supposed to have in all of our blood at any given time. One teaspoon of sugar. That's in our entire system, all of our blood, right? 
the amount of sugar that an average person consumes, well, I'm not going to even get into it because it's just way, way too much. So if we were to chop this apple up, you know, it'd be roughly like one cup. And so what I want to show you is the amount of sugar in one apple is almost the same amount of sugar in one cup of apple juice. However, the effect on your hormones from eating an apple versus juice is drastically different. When you're consuming juice without the fiber, you're going to get a big spike in blood sugars and you're going to get a rebound effect of insulin coming in to push that blood sugar down, which is going to make you hungry and a little tired about 30 minutes after drinking this juice versus an apple, which has a good amount of sugar, but it also has the fiber, which buffers this blood sugar response. So fiber kind of dampens out the spike in blood sugars. There's actually two things that will lower this blood sugar insulin response. One is fiber and the other is fat. So if you were going to have the choice of consuming these two, of course, this would be better. And if you added fat with this, as in maybe some nut butter, on your apple, you would buffer the insulin response even more. And of course, I'm not recommending this because there's still a lot of sugar in here. But if you were to have the choice, this would be a much better choice. And of course, adding the nut butter would even be a better choice. Now, what's interesting about this apple juice, it says 100% apple juice, not from concentrated, okay? But if you look really close right here, it's hard to make this out what this says. It says, with added ingredients. What are the other ingredients? Well, it says apple juice and ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid? Why are they putting ascorbic acid in there? Well, the answer lies in the expiration date. It says September 23, 2024. It's 2022 right now. It's November 2024. So this is going to expire in like two years. How can this sit on the shelf without being refrigerated for another two years? Yours. Well, because it's pasteurized. Okay. That's heated. One thing that is interesting to know about vitamin C, it is very sensitive to light and heat. Okay. As in pasteurization, even at temperatures at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, you start to break down vitamin C. The temperatures they use to pasteurize this juice is like 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see, they destroy the vitamin C in apple juice and they have to add it back in there. So that way on the label, they can say it's high in vitamin C. The only problem is the source of vitamin C they're using doesn't come from natural apples. It comes from cornstarch and sulfuric acid. It's made synthetically. It's out of the normal vitamin C complex. It's basically a synthesized version of a part of vitamin C called ascorbic acid. I have a very interesting video on the real vitamin C. Check it out. I put it up right here.